Good evening. Uh, you're watching Point Blank here at KTN News, and we are shooting from the Nairobi Serena. Born in 1924, retired President Daniel Arab Moy was sworn in as Kenya's second president uh, in 1978, becoming the, a legend in Lift Valley. President Moy began the political journey that would see the Rift Valley at the core of Kenyan politics. It is no secret that the fortunes of the office holders of the Vice Presidency of the Republic of Kenya have since independence waxed and warmed with the political tide and large seas of the president. Daniel Toroitich Arap Moi, the third vice president, has so far been the only man to directly succeed his appointee, and that was upon the death of the founding president, Jomo Kenyatta. For 11 years, Moi endured as those around Kenyatta viewed him harmless and easy to sideline. Described as the giraffe with a long neck who sees far by the first Vice President Jaramogi Oginga Odinga in his autobiography, Not Yet Uhuru, Moi would, after crossing the August House floor in 1964, organize a series of rallies in the Rift Valley to popularize Kenyatta and the ruling party Kanu and consolidate his base. Moi, as acting president, would continue to pronounce his loyalty, describing the fallen leader as my teacher, my father, and my leader. His humility and loyalty were rewarded when the cabinet held a special session and declared that there will be no other candidate for the office of the presidency. In September 1978, Daniel Arap Moi was declared the president of the Republic of Kenya. Born 53 years ago, Deputy President William Samoy Arap Lutro is trying to fill in the shoes that were left by the retired president. Is he man enough to fill the shoes of Daniel Arap Moy? William Samoy Ruto is undoubtedly the most powerful and influential vice truck deputy president in the Kenya's political history and as such considered the heir presumptive that was until the historic March 9, 2018 handshake between President Uhuru Kenyatta and former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. From commissioning roads and equipping hospitals to presiding over church and school harambees to hosting opposition legislatures and county assembly members at his official residence in Karen Nairobi, the deputy president has crisscrossed the country in an almost manic fashion to the constation on his both the president. Why does it appear that Ruto and his Tangatanga band have openly and aggressively defied calls, even those that publicly derogated his actions by his principle for an end to political campaigning? What is driving his unhinged and unprecedented quest to occupy a seat that is not vacant? Has Kenyatta for too long been too lenient on Ruto? <laughs> who possibly took his short brief as de facto de jour, acting president for four days between 5th and 8th October 2014 to Hart, when Kenyatta chose to attend the ICC Hague Status Conference in a personal capacity. The united image of the first-term Jubilee administration where Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto stood together to announce changes to the structure of the government at either State House Nairobi or State House Mombasa is now clearly and firmly in the past. Uhuru is asserting his authority, taking full control of his presidency and legacy like never before. There is a shift from the frustrated figure of 2019 who shocked the nation with his harsh outbursts on June 15, 2019, where he pointedly dismissed the Tanga Tanga groupings and led 2022 open campaigns for his deputy. There is a follow-up to the Sagana State Lodge Summit meeting on November 15, 2019, where the president in front of over 4,000 leaders selected from the wider Gema region pointedly asked the rebels, what are you not getting from this presidency and the Jubilee party that you will get in 2022? Why do you want to bury me when I am alive? And it appears he has taken heed of his enough is enough declaration delivered in anger while speaking in the Mango Catholic Church in Gatundu North constituency, Kiambu County. <laughs> A hostage no longer. 
42 days after Mango, Uhuru in a state of the nation address from Mombasa spoke to a strategy that would focus on the economy rather than the practice of political kingdom pursuit. Some of the areas that my administration intends to focus on over the next few months. The primary thrust of that strategy shall be economic. And it's for the reason that the economy is what we want to be a much more important focus than politics. And this is because our practice throughout our history as a country has been one of pursuing the political kingdom as opposed to the economic kingdom. I have also today reassigned duties of cabinet secretaries and principal secretaries as follows. One, Ambassador Rachel A. Omamo as a cabinet secretary for foreign affairs. Ms. Cicely K. Karioki as a cabinet secretary for water sanitation and irrigation. The Honorable Peter Munya as the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries, and Cooperatives. Missing from the list was the name of Mwangi Kiunjuri, the Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries, and Cooperatives Cabinet Secretary. The most high-profile CS from the Mount Kenya region, who had spent the last two years openly campaigning for Deputy President Ruto's 2020 presidential bid and lobbying to be his running mate. Convened a press conference in October last year, attended by 40 MPs to lay out their conditions before accepting a yet-to-be-released Building Bridges Initiative proposal, and a month later cried exclusion in Embo in the company of MPs regarding the Uhuru Kenyatta's most momentous initiative and threatened to boycott future presidential functions had been dropped unceremoniously. And in a nod to the Sagana summit, former Senator Mutahi Kagwe, who acted as master of ceremonies, was nominated as the health cabinet secretary. KTN looked far and wide for a man who could look critically at two men, retired President Daniel Arab Moy and William Samoy Arab Ruto. What is the difference between these two men? What drives them and how are they different? There was only one man who could fit in the bill, Mr. Cyrus Jirongo, the only Kenyan whose money was named after him, Meatano Ilikwena Ipa Jirongo. But before I talk to my guest today, Huyu Jama, what has he done before? On July 14, 1992, a series of amendments presented to the August House by then Attorney General Amos Wako to remove the ceiling previously imposed on election expenditure by candidates was passed. These amendments set the stage for the launch of the Youth for Kano 92 lobby group that stunned the political field with its loud, vigorous, and more importantly, well-oiled machinery. YK92, made up of 23 young business elites, was chaired by a very youthful 31-year-old, Cyrus Jirongo. Such was the group's impact, and Jirongo's in particular, that the new 500 Kenya shillings banknote was adroitly named the Jirongo Note. The multi-pronged and coordinated YK92 structure endeared Jirongo to President Daniel Arap Moy and often the real estate developer credited with building the Hazina Kemri Saika Estates with over 1,100 units will be seen in the President's entourage during various public and private functions during the last two terms of Moy's presidency. Having been elected as the representative for Lugari constituency on a Kano ticket at the December 9th 1997 general election, his close association with the Moy family became even more evident. On 31st December 2001, Jirongo was awarded the Order of the Golden Heart of Kenya, second class after being appointed cabinet minister for rural development. With Moy's promise of a generational transfer for leadership, Jirongo played a key role in Uhuru Kenyatta's first stab at the presidency in 2002. Ultimately, Kanu's project Uhuru failed. Jirongo would stand by as the young Uhuru Kenyatta read out a seminal concession speech that ensured a proper power transition to the then president-elect Mwai Kibaki. 
Jirongo, a leader with the capacity of offering broader perspectives concerning Kenya's diverse and social, political and economic dynamics, has chaired three political parties, namely Kadu between 2006 and 2010, the Federal Party of Kenya between 2013 and 2015, and the United Democratic Party since 2016. The former cabinet minister holds an executive MBA from the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agricultural and Technology and a high national diploma in management from Cambridge University. Good evening, you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to KTN News. Thank you. I hope my baby may attend. Uh, anyway, uh, happy New Year, sir. Happy New Year. How are you? Uh, and welcome. Thank you. Uh, Bonajirunga, I want to start at the beginning. I know you've been my friend for many, many years. And uh, I'm, I'm really keen to um, ask you your immediate recollection of retired President Moy. Uh, from a bird's eye view. Mm. Simply, if I have to try and summarize whom the Moy was and is up to now. Basically, this is a man who understood that uh, the opportunities and uh, facilities uh, that go with power, that make you seem invisible, are not what makes you great. This is a man who believed that whatever he did, somebody else was writing his history that God in heaven knew exactly what he was doing. And that created somebody who is merciful, but understood that he needs to lead a country. And uh, it created a man who did not look at himself as invincible. And uh, the boasted greatness that comes with the trappings of power, he looked at himself as uh, a shepherd, so to say, somebody who led the country for the good of the people. CJ, a lot of people tell me about Moy's humility. If you look back at when Jaramogi fell out with the late Jomo Kenyatta, and then Moy was, um, you know, uh, there was this issue of Moy when he came in, and as Kenyatta's life came to an end, there was an issue of changing the constitution, remove Moy, and people say his humility is what at the end made him survive. What do you, do you concur? Uh, Moy understands one thing, that uh, leadership is uh, sacrifice, leadership is humility, leadership is uh, taking care of people and understanding the views and the needs of people, which is really, in my view, uh, any serious leader should take as a position. And uh, I look at his leadership as a very serious example of what we miss today in the leadership so, of CJ, the country. let's then go to the body politic. Mm. Um, uh, retired President Moy was famously known to have brought in Kamatusa. In fact, it, the issue was he was able to widen his reach beyond his native uh, birthplace, mm. uh, Sacho in Baringo, that he actually widened the basket. What do you want to say about that? Uh, President Moi is not just about Kamatusa, the way I would look at it. Uh, literally in every village and uh, in every uh, place in this country, retired President Moi knew somebody and he had a relationship with somebody. And that uh, helped him a great deal to uh, read the pulse of the country at any one time. So despite uh, him ex uh, trying to bring the pastoralist communities, the Kalenjin together uh, to work as a team, remember they have uh, various traditional issues like cattle wrestling and other issues. It was not meant for a political base. Uh, retired President Moy looked at his polit political base as the Republic of Kenya and he would go out of his way to ensure that the country is together. Now, moving away from that, um, I also then want to say, as he retired, uh, he left Rift Valley 
uh, without a leader to take his position. Um, over the years, there has been several attempts to take over the mantle. The late Nicholas B. Watt, for example, your friend, Senator Gideon Moy, and now the DP, William Ruto. Let's now maybe agree that Ruto is the kingpin in the Rift Valley. How would you contrast the two? Uh, yes, uh, William Ruto could be the kingpin in Rift Valley today. But I think uh, it is a misplaced choice in my uh, blunt view that uh, if I had to look at Gideon Moy and look at uh, William Ruto, they are far apart. Maybe William has learned to socialize, but he doesn't socialize genuinely. And uh, it is taking Gideon time to actually socialize, but the two are miles apart. One is a human being and another one is something else. Let's uh, then, first of all, look at this man, William Ruto. Uh, Cyrus, people who are younger may not know of YK92 or your role um, when President Moy was fighting for political life, that you were mobilizing the youth of Kenya and so forth, and you then got together with Ruto. Could you give us a synopsis of YK92 and how you met Ruto? Uh, IK92 was a lobby group, uh, just uh, young men coming together who were able, and uh, they went uh, uh, flat out to try and mobilize the country for retired President Moy. What and period was this, Cyrus? This was 91, and uh, uh, ending up in 92, and up to 93, uh, the earlier part of 93 after elections. And the purpose was that uh, at one time uh, there was a serious agitation of multipartism in the Republic. And uh, the agitation had gone on for quite a, uh, some time, repeal of Section 2A, so that multiparty could be accepted in the Republic of Kenya. And uh, it was not easy, uh, particularly for the people. Uh, there were so many things going on, it was difficult for the Moi. And we came in. To try to, 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 to work with him. And let me then say, at, at that time um, of 91 and so on, you were the chairman of YK92. What role was William Ruto in YK92? Uh, because I, I'm trying to find out how your relationship began. Uh, <laughs> William Ruto was never part of uh, Youth for Can 92. William, William Ruto was one of the young men who spend their time at KCC, at the Youth and Women's Office, with Dr. Julia Ojambo. Uh, I actually came to know William Ruto uh, properly uh, after elections in 1993. Uh, we worked closely with uh, Julia Ojambo, and that is how uh, I ended up knowing Ruto, and specifically when he came in to try and get some orders to supply T-shirts and all those sorts of things. I see. So, um, in terms of the joining Kanu as a party and becoming a, a operative, you are very close to President Moy. Obviously, Ruto began his political life then. How, how did he enter into the Moy orbit? And uh, what do you remember? The truth be said, uh, William Ruto then, after the 1992 uh, campaign, where we lobbied uh, for votes for Moy, he then looked for friendship with me through Fred Amayo, and they pushed very hard. I was a bit hesitant, but uh, because of something that had happened, and uh, I talked to Amayo, I told Fred Amayo, uh, this young man, you brought him into my office and asked me to give him uh, a contract to supply 10,000 t-shirts. You remember he did not supply the 10,000. Instead, he brought a thousand t-shirts and uh, repeatedly uh, delivered the same uh, t-shirts ten times. So we ended up paying, or I ended up paying him 1.2 million shillings because a t-shirt then was about uh, 120 shillings for the delivery of only a thousand shillings. Uh, what he did was he tried and corrupted the young boys who were in the stores and uh, 
he would deliver a thousand t-shirts they give it back to him he delivers again they give it back to him uh, 10 times so i paid him uh, 1.2 million instead of uh, paying him for a thousand t-shirts which would have been 120,000 and that is the reason why i resisted when fred amayo tried to push him uh, to become closer to us to work together after uh, disbanding yk92 right so that kenyans can understand his journey after that how did he then jump in to be an assistant minister in the moi government that is uh, far much much later yes we worked together then uh, amayo succeeded fred amayo and uh, we worked together with william in the same office until 1997 and uh, some of the things i feared uh, when amayo was trying to push him closer uh, came to pass including you agree with somebody Uh, there is this work you need to do uh, he comes back and gives you the wrong quote uh, you give him money the same money is discovered in the, his car in the evening those kind of things you, you know sir i bring this issue because um the deputy president um was quoted in uh, in 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 a, in, 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 a, in a function saying that the problem with you you never move from the past ulikuwa mkubwa wake ama mdosi you see I, I want Kenyans to understand that history when you try to get to whatever position using whatever means including fraud deception and uh, which is a hallmark of a lot of politicians in this country uh, unfortunately I was not made like that Uh, I do my things fairly in a very straight way. Uh, I do not uh, uh, take advantage of people. He does take advantage of people. Uh, he worked with President Moi. President Moi made him a deputy minister and uh, he moved on. I introduced him to President Moi. Uh, after that, uh, he got rid of Moi. Moi meant nothing. he became Raila's friend after that Raila meant nothing he stepped on uh, Raila very roughly uh, tried to penetrate the Kibaki regime uh, finally ending up uh, through struggle because i know actually who resisted working with the uh, with Ruto for quite a while through friends uh, Paul Ndungu tried to get him closer uh, who refused it is uh, Wanjigi who finally managed to push Uh, Ruto through to Uhuru but i think Uhuru also read that there is a bit of trouble here because history could tell him that this is a man if he has no respect for Jirongo he has no respect for Moi he has no respect uh, for Raila and these are people who he has worked with uh, in politics and tried these people have played a role in his uh, political life who am i Uhuru Kenyatta that this man is going to work with me and he respect me and uh, we will work together for the good of this country. So Jirongo because this is point blank. Yes. Are you telling Kenyans uh, who are watching you today that Ruto and Uhuru are not it's not it's not it's not it's not working. They are not cut from the same leaf as I might say. They are totally two different people. You have somebody who is uh, deceptive and uh, you have somebody who is genuine and straight it's very difficult for the two of you to work together competently and efficiently i have to ask you this because um from where you sit there's confusing headlines every day um there's tanga tanga kieleweke names that are all there out there in the media but many times when the deputy president is speaking he says in kutuma na mdos you send me here with 5 million or a million then tomorrow the headline they are fallen apart they are not you know jirongo this country is in 2020 and i just would like you to tell kenyans is it broken with kenyatta and ruto i'm not seeing it working and i saw it not working from the word go uh, it can never work uh, because as i've told you you are dealing with totally two different individuals yes. and then if that is the case i wanted to say this is it kenyatta who betrayed ruto because at least where the news headlines are is that Kenyatta na Ruto walikuwa pamoja na Kenyatta na Danganya Ruto 
Amemponya. He is not keeping his word. Why do you think this has broken down? Uh, history can bear out uh, Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta on this. Uh, one, uh, uh, William Ruto fell out with the retired President Moy. He fell out with Raila. He fell out with me. And uh, it is usual for him. After he has used you and he thinks uh, you have no value anymore, the first time maybe, uh, for their first five years, uh, Uhuru was useful. But for now, Uhuru is irrelevant as far as uh, William is concerned. He wants to get to the next, and uh, whoever he can use. Uh, that's why he's always in central province, it's near uh, places. Uh, as a deputy president, if I'm going to my president's uh, turf, surely I need his blessings and tell him I'm going to your turf. What message do you give me? What I can tell you, without uh, flinching an eye, uh, most of those incursions uh, Ruta has been making in uh, central province, uh, they, are, they stem from realizing, as far as it's concerned, that Uhuru is of no value to me anymore. Let me go. Let me see who I can groom and uh, the people I'll work with uh, to achieve my ends. Uh, and of course, you expect Uhuru to be frustrated, uh, other than the other issues that have uh, played out very loudly, including corruption. Well, Cyrus Jirogo says retired President Daniel Arab Moy and the upcoming William Samoy Arab Ruto are different people, cut from different clothes. Jirongo contends that Ruto dumped him or used him, and he did the same to retired Prime Minister um, Raila Odinga. Is there more than meets the eye? to William Ruto. You're watching KTN News.